Hey everybody, welcome back to our series on how to solve puzzle cubes. Uh, today, this video is going to cover the 4x4x4 four by four by four Rubik's Cube, also known as the Rubik's Revenge. Now, before we start, I should mention it's very, very important that you watch the video on the 3x3 three three Rubik's Cube because you will need the information there to solve all of the higher and lower Rubik's Cubes in the series. Let's take a look at a 3x3 three three cube. If they're all, all a cube, then they can be solved in almost the same way. Uh, if you look at a 3x3 three three cube, it has corners, edges, and centers. Well, we have corners, edges, and centers on a 4x4 four four cube as well. With the 2x2 two two cube, layers are removed. In the 4x4 four four cube, layers are added. So instead of shrinking it, we're expanding it but you want to shrink the cube back. Our job in all of the higher cubes is to shrink them down into a three by three cube. How do we do that? You'll see in this video. Now let's look at some of the differences with these cubes. The center piece in a three by three cube is not movable. You cannot move it, so it's always gonna be white on this side, green here, yellow here, and so forth. Odd number cubes have a fixed center piece, all of the even number cubes don't. That means all of these pieces move around. Why is this a problem? Well, if you solve a red here, but it should be blue, then you can't match all of the pieces where they belong. You have to remember on even cubes what the colors are. The majority of standard cubes, they all follow the same color pattern, uh, except for the V cube, which uses black um, instead of white they will always have the same colors. So white is always opposite yellow, blue always opposite green, and red always opposite orange. You'll have to remember this in order to solve any even cube. Another thing that makes even cubes and every higher order cube uh, different than, than the three by three cube is that you run into something called parity. It does not happen to the 3x3, so you will never encounter it here. This is probably the most challenging part of the cube. I'm going to show you an easy way to solve it. Just one thing to keep in mind. If you look back to the 3x3 cube, remember how we solved it and the steps we took. Find your centers, then make your crosses, your edges, and then go for the corners. And this is true for every other cube as well. What we're going to do is we're going to solve the centers, then we're going to solve the edges, and then we're going to solve the corners. One problem that people often have with higher than 3x3 three three is that the algorithms start to get very complicated. There are many more steps in order to solve this cube. It might be easier for you to not use an algorithm and just memorize the steps. What this means is that the notations of the sides, like this could be R, um, you know, R inverted, it might be harder to remember that way. So depending on different learning styles, uh, use whichever one you prefer, but I'm going to make this as simple as I possibly can. Without further ado, let's mix this thing up. Okay, I think we're good. So first we have to pick a color. I'm going to choose blue because I like blue. We have to recall what color face is opposite what color face. First we're going to solve, like we said, find the centers. So centers come first. That means one, two, three, four. Then we're going to solve its opposite. Then we're going to solve the four other centers, and then we're going to move on. So your first set of center pieces should be pretty easy to solve. We look for these pieces. Ignore everything up here in the outside layer. We're going to focus on the center layers. I am going to do blue, so I have a blue piece right here. I need to find this one this one and this one. So now we're going to hunt for any center pieces that are colored blue. So these are all of my blue pieces. One, two, three, and they all have to come over here. So as you can see, this one belongs here. And on the other side, my other blue is here. So all I have to do is turn the whole thing in half, like so, and they're now connected. I have two like this, and I have two like this. All it takes is for me to rotate it. I'm going to take this one, turn it like that, and now I have this one here, 
and I have this one here. All I have to do is turn it around, and now they're together. And that's it. You have solved your first centerpiece. Not too difficult, but of course it does get more difficult as we go along. The next step is to solve the opposite color face. Now, if you remember blue, the opposite of blue is going to be green. So let's find all of the green center pieces. And they all have to go over here. We have one here, one here, and one here. So it doesn't matter where you solve the green, we're going to move it up here anyways. I'm going to show you how to take all of your pieces from these rows and send them up here without interfering with your center cube here. Let's look for a green. We have a green here and we have a green here. That's perfect. So they're right where they belong. I'm just going to turn it and now they're right where they should go. And this one's here and this one's here. So if I want to match these two, one and two, all I have to do is make sure that this piece and this piece are green. This should be turned like that. And now it would line right up with this one. And now let's move it. Perfect. Now we have one here and we have one here. But wait a minute. We just messed up the blue. Okay, we can't do that. So let's bring the blue back. Okay, blue's here, green is here, green is here. So first, if you have your blue down here, we're gonna hold it so the blue's face down. We have one green piece here, one green piece here. We're going to bring the green piece up. Then we wanna bring the green piece down. That way we leave the blue alone. What we need to do is we need to twist it and then twist the two greens out of this side. So we twist it up, and then we twist it around, and then we twist it back down, and now your blues are okay, and your two greens are where they belong, opposite blue, okay? And we're gonna have to use this very often for all of the following cubes, so just remember that easy type of, not really an algorithm, but it's a good pattern to remember how to move something while keeping everything else stable. Now that we have the two greens up here, we have two greens up here, and they belong beside these two. So look, I'm going to bring this over here, I'm going to move this up here, but I've messed up my blue. So I have to use the same thing we just learned. We want to turn these around so that the two greens line up with each other. And then we're going to do what we just did before, just instead of the left side, we're going to use the right side. So we're going to turn it up, then we're going to turn it around so the green is out of the way, and then we're going to turn it back down, and now your two greens are perfectly matched with the other two greens, and your blue and green is now solved. Now that we've solved the blue and the green centerpiece, we're going to solve all of the other centerpieces. So first we have to remember our colors. So remember that blue goes here and green goes here. That means you should have red on this side, orange on this side, yellow up here, and white at the bottom. First we're gonna look at yellow. Let's look for some yellow. We have yellows here, and so I need to bring these two yellows over to this face. These are solved and these are solved. When we turn everything like this, now our centers are not moving. So we can do whatever we want with them. So keep that in mind, and let's try to get these yellow pieces up here. So I'm going to twist this like so, and then I'm going to twist this up, and now the yellows are where they should be. Now I'm gonna look for the other two yellows. One is here, one is here. So I'm going to make sure that they're lined up like this. I'm gonna match this one to this one. So I want this to turn so that if they were beside each other, they would be good. So let's do that. We're gonna turn it now. We got them here. Now we're gonna rotate these two and these two. So I'm gonna twist them like this. Then I'm going to bring them up. And now everything is where it should go. We have green, we have yellow, and we have blue 
all solved. We don't want to solve white just yet. We're going to save that one for last. What we want to do is we want to solve the one beside it here so that we have these two unsolved. It'll be much easier to move things around if we solve them like this and this. What we're going to do next is we're going to, we have blue here, we have yellow here, so let's solve red because we have two red pieces already lined up together. So in order to do that, we have to find our other two red pieces and bring them up here. So here's one piece and here's the other piece. So they are lined up where they should go and we don't want to mess up this yellow. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the yellow up, the, sorry, bring the red up, rotate it out of the way and then bring it back down. So here we go, up, rotate out of the way, and come back down. And now we have the two reds together and the two reds together beside the yellow. We need the two reds up here so that the colors are matching. We know the steps it takes, so let's just do those steps. One, two, line up with one, two, so let's line these up and then rotate up, out of the way, and then back down. Up, out of the way, and then back down. And there you go. Now we have solved red. Now that I have blue, yellow, green, and red solved, we just have to solve orange and we have to solve white. So remember that yellow goes opposite of white and then red goes opposite of orange. What we need to do is we need to do the same pattern as we've been doing so far. In order to get as much orange as we can up here, we're going to bring these two orange up, twist it around, and then bring back white. So let's try that out. We're going to bring this up, rotate, and then bring it back down. Now we've done almost everything we need to do. We have one, two, three over here, and we have one, two, three over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a way to move this piece with this piece without interfering with all of the center pieces we have so far. In order to do that, you have to turn one layer down, one layer over, and then one layer down, one layer back over, and then one layer up, and then over, and then one layer up, and then back over. You know, downwards, over, downwards, back over, and then upwards, over, upwards, back over. So let's try it out and see what happens. We're going to take just this piece and go down, okay, and now see the orange is over here, and then we're going to go with just the front piece, over. So this is all I'm using. So down, over, then we're going to take this piece and go down and then back over and then we're going to go up and then over and then up and we've solved it. And there you go. That's it. So just remember, down, over, down, back, over, up, over, up, back, over, and you're good. Just in case that went too fast, we're going to go over that one more time. So we have one piece here in the top corner, and we have one piece here that needs to be fixed. So we're going to make sure that they are in the same position relative to each other. So on this side, it's in the top corner. So on this side, it's going to be in the top corner. So let's put it there. Okay, so we want to move this piece, and we want to move this piece and magically twist them around. All we're going to do is downwards, and then over, and then downwards, and then back over, and then upwards, and over, and upwards, back over. So let's try it one more time. So we have down over, down, back over, and now up, over, up, 
and, you know, back over. But it's already solved. And that is going to be invaluable. I promise you it's going to be very, very important that you remember that algorithm. We solve the centers, so we've got our centers. Now we need to solve, just like before, the cross part. We have to solve the edges, okay? Now, with the 3x3 three three cube, one edge, no problem. No fuss, no muss. But, clearly, we have a problem here because we have two pieces to make up the edges. So our job is to make this thing look like this thing. How do we do that? We have to make one color here, one color here, one color here. We can do that with the 4x4 four by, four by having one corner here, color, two of the same color here, and then one color here. That way we have one row, one row, one row. One, two, three. And then suddenly it will look like a 3x3 three three cube. Just want to keep in mind, you're going to spend most of your time solving this cube, finding these edges and matching them together. This is the longest part of the cube solving process. And don't stress, we're going to try to get you through this as easy as possible. Our job is going to be to line up these two colors so that they match. And we're going to ignore the corners for now. Before, focus on here, ignore here. Now we're going to ignore here and focus on here. So our job is to have this color and this color and this color and this color being the same. So let's pick any color. We're going to start with, uh, like we said before, blue. So let's start with blue. Let's keep doing blue. Uh, I have blue and white. Let's look for another blue and white tile. And look, it's right here, right opposite of each other. What we want is we want this blue cube up down here and this cube up here. How do we do that? All we have to do is take this, twist it up, then take this one, twist it around, and then the top layer we're going to twist back. And now let's take a look. Now we have blue and white here, and we have the blue piece up here and the white piece up here. If we have two of the same color here, we have a problem. If we have a blue here and a blue here, we have a problem. We just want blue here and blue on this side. It's white face over here. Why do we want that? Because when we're turning it, we want it to look like that. Okay. In order to solve the edges, you're going to have to move the cube halfway like this. The problem with that is that you're going to ruin your centerpieces. So what you need to do is you need to turn it halfway, get everything out of the way, just like before, and then bring everything back to where it was before. These two over here, so remember blue, white, blue, white, we're going to turn it one way this way, so now they're linked. And then we want to bring it back, so we don't want to mess this up, we're going to twist this out of the way. Now that it's up here, when we twist it back, it's going to fix. Uh-oh. Problem. Not quite. So we're going to bring this one up. Okay. Then we're going to bring it around this way. So now it's out of the way here, and it's also out of the way here. Look where it is. It's all the way in the back. And then we're going to bring this side back down. And then we're going to twist it back. And now this is OK. All of our centers are OK. And our white and blue is also fine. So I'm going to show you that one more time with a different edge uh, in case it was too fast for you. So we have, let's for example, we have white and we have green. Uh, white and green, we're going to look for white and green. Ah, white and green. OK, so we have white and green over here. And we have white and green over here. We have to get this guy over to this side. So let's do that. Let's bring him over here. And let's turn him around. And look at that. We have green and green. That's a problem. We need to have green here, and we need to have white here. Remember, like last time. So how do we do that? We turn this one upwards. We turn this face, the front face, like so. And then we turn the top face like so. And rotate. It's all good. And now let's try that 
other algorithm again. Uh, so we're going to cut it in half, throw it up, send it to the back, bring everything back, and fix it. So let's try that again. The whole half, the top half, twist once. Then we're going to follow these green and whites. Green and white goes up, and then green and white goes around to the back. Then reverse what you just did. Go back down, and then return everything back to normal. And now you have green and white solved, and now you have blue and white solved. So we're getting there. Blue and orange here, blue and orange here. OK, so let's bring them together. We have this one down here. Let's bring it over here. Blue and blue again. So let's fix that. Twist ones up, twist the front face around, and then twist the top face back. And now you have blue orange, blue orange. And we're going to do that one more time. Halfway, up, top, back, reverse. OK, blue and orange, done. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to uh, rush through some more of them. Uh, so bear with me for a second. Now, eventually, you're going to run into a problem where you have red and yellow, red and yellow, OK, and you're going to send everything over, but you have everything up here fixed. You have everything up here fixed, everything up here fixed. So what happens is when you turn it around, throw it back, come back around, come back down, you're about to mess up this blue and orange that we did in the first place. So you can't do that. What we need to do is we need to make sure that up here there are garbage pieces that don't go together. For example, this one is wrong. So how about we put that over here and let's try that again. So we're going to reverse this, okay? Throw it up, put it to the back. We're not going to bring this one down. We're going to take this one, rotate it one more time so that this is coming down. Then that comes down and that comes down. All of these pieces are safe and fixed and you have not messed up anything. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm going to speed things up one more time uh, and solve some more of this cube. Okay, so uh, if you've made it this far, you're going to run into a new problem. First of all, congratulations. I'm not sure how long that took you, but if it's your first time, it may have been a bit annoying. You've solved these two, these two, all the way around. But you have run into a problem where you have this one going with this one, and this one going with this one. That is a huge problem, because if you do this, and you go back around, and you go up here, there is nothing to change it with. It's all garbage. So we can't do that. What we're going to do is, if, for example, you have your pieces blue and orange, I mean green and orange here, and green and orange here, like you're supposed to, Okay, so you have these two where they belong. Uh, you don't want that right now. What you want is you want to have the two colors, green and orange, here, and green and orange here. So in order to reverse that, just go up, twist, and come back. The same algorithm. Uh, the same thing we were doing before to switch it upwards, we can bring it back down. So now they're the same. Okay, so you want yellow, green, yellow, green here, and green, orange, green, orange here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the bottom half, twist it once. Then we're going to go right once. And then we're going to go front once, up once, right inverted once, front once, and then bring it back. And now you've solved green and yellow and green and orange. 
and now you've solved all of these pieces. Congratulations. I don't know if you noticed, but this kind of looks like a 3x3 three three cube to me now. We have same color here, same color here, one color here, one color here, centerpiece, centerpiece. So look at that. We can solve this just like a 3x3 three three cube now. So let's take what we learned from this guy and apply it to this guy. Okay, so we have solved almost everything except for the top layer just by following the principles of the 3x3 cube, which is really great, should save you some time. Um, anyways, we're going to do the, fall, the last algorithm uh, for the corner pieces of the 3x3 cube, and we're going to see what happens. So, uh, if you remember what that one is, even if you don't, I'm just going to do it for you. Um, up, right, up inverted, left inverted, up, right inverted, up inverted, left. Okay, we're going to look to see if the corners are correct. Any good corners? Here's one. Up, right, up inverted, left inverted, up, right inverted, up inverted, left. And look at that. We have solved these two sides. These two sides are good, and these two sides are good. So um, we're just going to fix them now because they're good, and we're just going to put them in the right color. And just like before with the three by three and even the two by two you should come very close to solving your cube and there you have it four by four cube solved in no time flat but wait a minute didn't i say something about parity uh, let's say you're solving this thing just like a three by three cube and then you get to the top layer where you have the l shape or the straight line, and you want to make that cross, and you get this. So let's say you have a T shape. This is impossible on this 3x3 three three cube, and you only get it on here and the higher order cubes. So let's say you have the green is here, and you have this orange here, although it's green here. So this is a situation that's called parity. Um, if you run into this while you're solving the top layer, just leave this alone and solve everything just like a, you know, just like a regular cube. Um, once you finish it, then we're going to come back to these two pieces. Okay, so now I solved the whole cube, and I still have this problem where these two colors are flipped, and everything else is fine. Other than that, this is perfectly solved. In order to solve this parity, um, there are many different algorithms you can remember. Most of them require 20 or so moves, maybe 24 different move notations, just to remember how to do this. Um, so I picked up a pretty easy way to solve this, um, and I hope it is easy for you. Um, this is the way you can do it. You want to deal with a T-shape, okay? So first we're going to move this one once, then we're going to move this one twice, and then we're going to move this one once, and then we're actually going to move the front one twice. So every time you move this one, it's a T. Every time you move this one, it's a T, but in a different direction. Okay? So we're only dealing with this layer, this layer, this layer, and this layer. Okay, so let's try it out. We're going to move this one one time, not this piece, just the center of once. So let's move it down one time. Then, because we move this one, we're going to move this one two times. One, two. Now we're going to try this one down one time. Only this piece. Okay. And then we're going to move this face, the front face, twice. One, two. Just like the other one. Next, we're going to use this layer again and bring it back up where it was before. So up, bring it up, and because we move this one, we're going to do another front. So one, two. And then we're going to take this guy and move him two. One, two. 
So let's try one, two, and because we moved him, we're going to move the top layer two times. One, two. And then we're going to bring him back one time. One. And because we brought him back, we're going to turn this around again. One, two. And then we're going to bring him down one last time. So one, and then one more top turn. One, two. So you may not recognize it, but we did solve the parity. Um, all we have to do left is one last step. So we have a few things messed up here. We're just going to bring everything back to where they belong. To do that, all you have to do is twist the front face twice. Okay, and now look, red goes here, green, and orange. So you can see the orange should be where the red is. So let's send that to the back and see what happens. Down one, and down one, and now orange is complete. Everything is complete, except for this top layer, which has no more parity problems. So one simple twist, and you have fixed that parity. Every time you move this one, you make a T. Every time you move this one, you make a, another T, like this. So one this way, two this way, one this way, two this way, one back up, two this way, two down, two this way, one up, one this way, one down, one this way. And then flip everything around, two around, and bring everything back to where they belong. And that's solving one type of parity. That's called the edge parity. And I hope that helps you. So what if, for example, your cross was fine, you did not have a T-shape, and no problems with the edges, but every time you try to sort your corner pieces, you run into some problems. You can't sort them for whatever reason, it just doesn't work out. This is called corner parity, uh, where no matter how many times you do that algorithm, these two will never go where they should. And this will never happen on the 3x3, it will only happen on the 4x4 and up. So in order to solve this, it's actually pretty easy, uh, much easier than the edge parity. And all you have to remember is the following. You just want to deal with this layer, this layer, and this layer. So one, two, three. So we're going to move every time every one we move, we're going to move two times. So if we move this one, we're going to move it two times. If we move this one, it's going to go two times. And if we move this one, it goes two times. Now, if you notice, if you move the cube two times this way, left, or if you move the cube two times right, it's the same move. So do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So here is the algorithm to solve corner parity. This is true for corner parity where these two corners are wrong, or these two corners are wrong. Just make sure that you have the two corners in front of you, or if it's diagonally, you have the corner over here. Make sure one messed up corner is in your top right corner, and we'll try to solve this. Here we go. First, this is the first of three rounds. We're going to go down two times, and top two times. One, two, and then one, two. That's round one. Round two, we're going to go down two times, and then the top two layers two times. So one, two, and then one, two. And then the third and final time, we're going to go down two, and then and that's it. So one, two, and then one, two. And now, even though it doesn't look like it, your, your cube is actually more messed up now than it was before, um, but the corners are now going to be fixed. So all we have to do now is take a few steps backwards and 
resolve this cube like a three by three by making sure that your edges are lined up with these colors. So this one and this one should be solved and these two should be messed up. So it's gonna take the algorithm to solve your edges, um, right, up, right inverted, up, right inverted, right, up, up, right inverted. So that's gonna be one time. We're gonna to to do that one more time. But first we wanna line up so that we have similar edges here and similar edges here. So let's look for that. Green, blue, white. Ah, okay, so green and white are good. And we're going to have one good side here, one good side here. Bad, bad. And one more time. Right, up, right inverted. Up, right, up, up, right inverted. And now your edges should be good. Now we can solve for these corners. So let's make sure that all of the corners are going to show up in the right spots. Look for something that is already solved. Nothing really. And let's do that algorithm for the corner solving one more time. Okay, anything solved? Well, this is solved. This is not, this is not, and this is not. So let's start here and we'll do it one more time. And check it out. These two are now perfectly fine. And this is where it belongs, and this is where it belongs. So let's just quickly solve that. And there is your solved 4x4 four four cube. And those are the only kinds of parity you're going to encounter. And those are the solutions to both of them. And I hope this video helped you out. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, there's going to be more videos in the future, so stick around. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody.